into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name so in one minute can you just do that from the depth of your heart say lord i thank you this morning lord i bless your name the fact that i'm alive to see this day it is because of you another version says come through the gates so tell the lord we have come through this morning to see him to say thank you for all that he has done Father Theodore says thank you this morning. We return all the glory to you. We come through the gates, not through the back door, through the gates and through the front door this morning. We come to the door, the only door of our lives, and we say be thou exalted for all that you have done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 29 verse 10 to 11 says the Lord seated upon the floor. Yea, the Lord seated king forever. Can you wave your hands and worship the Lord God Almighty? He is king forever. Say to him this morning, just say something good. You are entering into a new month or you have entered already. Say thank you, Lord. As I've entered into the ember months, you will go before me. You will walk by my side. You will walk, you'll be my rear guard. You will speak to me. I will hear it clearly and I will follow. So that is why I'm coming to say thank you. As I'm entering into this ember month, oh God, I know that you are with me. He says the Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Tell the Lord, thank you for peace. I'm thanking you for peace for September. I'm thanking you for peace for October. I'm thanking you for peace for November. I'm thanking you for peace for December. I know that because you are with me, I will get to December. Thanking you, walking in peace, walking in glory. Say, Father, thank you. Say thank you for the strength. Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that you have done. We did not become a region by our own selves. It is the doing of the Lord. It is marvelous in our sight. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. The same grace and mercy that saw us through from January and brought us to September is well able to take us to December. Clap your hands, all ye people. Welcome the Most High God. Welcome the Excellency of Excellencies. Welcome the God of Gods. Welcome, that is do it with your heart, knowing who you are welcoming this morning. Father, we welcome you. We welcome you. We return all the glory to you. Father, as we come into your presence rejoicing, fill our hearts with joy. Fill our hearts with breakthrough. Fill our hearts with direction. Fill our hearts with focus. Geology is moving higher. All of us are moving higher. Our families are moving higher. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. We say thank you. Blessed be your name this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. And so we open the service this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Clap, 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 clap. <laughs> Father, thank you. Thank you for September. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Our hymn for this morning says, All creatures of our God and King. Lift up your voice and with us sing. What are we going to sing? The heavenly language, hallelujah. I tell somebody beside you, I will sing hallelujah till Jesus takes me home. Amen.
Jesus and give God praise in this house. Hallelujah. It's worthy to be praised this morning. I want you to talk to your neighbor and say, neighbor, tell that neighbor in your own language. Say to Bechuku. I said in your own language. Tell the person to Bechuku. Hallelujah. Even before I pray, Gio. He answered me to bet you could. He has done it for me. He has taken away my pain and given me peace of mind. Oh, to bet you could. He has done it for me.
We bless you, Jesus. We give you glory, Jesus. We hallow your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's what we've come to do. Hallelujah. Oh, be lifted.
lift up our voice and sing that song one more time. this morning. Father, receive us. As we have come together this morning to worship you as your people, Father, receive everything that concerns us. Father, we worship you with everything that we have, if we are anything at all. Father, the thousands of days that you have kept us alive, we say thank you. Father, we say thank you that you started this year with us. You started January with us. We say thank you. You started February with us. We say thank you. You brought us into the month of March. We are saying thank you for being our buckler, our shelter, our healer. We say thank you. Father, we saw, you saw us through April, May, June, July, August, September. Here we are. In the month of September, the month of fruitfulness, Father, we are saying thank you. We are saying thank you. If we have a million tongues, there will never be enough to say thank you. Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration. Father, here we are, pouring our hearts to you this morning. We ask that you visit us like never before. Father, we ask that we come to you with a fresh heart that we may receive of you 
Father, in a place that we have never been before, Father, take us to that place that we desire to be. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Tabernacle of David, praise the name of the Lord. If you know God is going to visit you this morning, praise the name of the Lord. Please be seated in God's presence. Please be seated in God's presence. I want to welcome every one of you to today's uh, Thanksgiving service on behalf of our Father in the Lord, Pastor Kyle Peter, and the good Lord that you have come, that you have come to meet, we do you good in the mighty name of Jesus. It's time for us to uh, take our tithe and our offering. So please, uh, we are encouraged to give to transfers. Please follow the instructions that you see on the screen. And if you want to also give via POS, there are POS seminars at the back of the auditorium. You can pay with your debit cards. And if you're writing a check, please write your check in favor of RCCG uh, Tabernacle of David. And um, you can also visit our website. Uh, you can also make payment through our website. God bless you. Once you are done, uh, please rise up to your feet and let us give God a dance offering. There are three baskets in the front of the altar. The two baskets to my extreme left and right are for the parishioners and the one in the middle is for the ministers. There are also baskets in the middle of the house for you to drop your offering. God bless you as you do so.
You're clapping to go. Please give God a clap offering. <laughs> Father, we say thank you. From that which you have blessed us, we have given back to you. Please accept them from us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you will open more doors for us so that we can give much more than we have given today in the mighty name of Jesus. We also pray for all those trusting you for a day like this to give back to you, that you will bless them. Father, for those who don't have anything at all to give, we pray that the next time we have a cause to gather like this, Father, you will also give them seed to sow in your name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, here in Tabernacle of David, we pray that in blessing you will continually bless us. And in multiplying, you will multiply us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Tabernacle of David, praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome in Jesus' mighty name. I welcome our elders, those who are still at home, and those who are here this morning. The Lord who has kept you thus far will keep on keeping you. He will perfect all that concerns you and give you joy over your children and grandchildren. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I welcome especially those who have joined us online, either through YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or any of our social media platforms. I pray that the remedy that pertains to you, you will receive it to profit you and your families in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And of course, I have to welcome the excellencies who are in church. So help me welcome. Dr. Excellency seated next to you. You know, we have many VIPs in TOD. Praise the Lord. We are in the month of September. The good Lord has kept us in January, in February, in March, in April, in May, in June, in July, in August. And now, the month of September. The month of multiple breakthroughs. The month of fruitfulness. So if September is your birthday or wedding anniversary, you can come forward so we can thank God together. Oh, Lord, I am very, very grateful for all you have done for me, oh Lord. Oh, 
can see that they dance well. <laughs> so let us pray. Father, I want to thank you for your children who are celebrating either their birthdays or wedding anniversaries in the month of September. Father, this is the month of fruitfulness. I pray for all your children in all their endeavors. Father, cause them to be fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for those who are married, who are trusting for the fruit of the womb. This month, Father, please visit them in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, in all their marriages, the sweet wine will not run out in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as their days be let their strength be in the mighty name of Jesus. In their going out, Father, please be with them. In their coming, Father, please watch over them. Whatever they are trusting you for to make their joy to be full, Father, please answer them by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless you, Lord. For we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Congratulations. Everybody testifies you are good. You are good, oh. You are good, Jehovah. You are so good. Everybody testifies. Praise the Lord. Today is a very special day for us, the Tabernacle of David. Because today is the first time we are meeting as a region. TOD has now been promoted to regional headquarters. And your pastor has been promoted to pastor in charge of region. Some of you don't have an idea of what a region is. <laughs> now, a region overseas provinces. Uh, we have, start, because starting from this month of September, we have five provinces under us, and we're supposed to increase uh, the provinces that we have. On the average, the province might be anywhere between 80 to 100 churches. You know? So in terms of starting off population in our region, we'll be between 40 and 45,000. That's what we are talking about. Now, I was telling the workers this morning, you know, I was transferred here 13 years ago. And once Saturday, I drove down with my wife to come and see the church I've been transferred to from Mikui. And I got here, where we are sitting now, you know, was a building construction area with uh, different things, sand, gravel on the ground. The only building standing here was the admin building, which was about to be completed. The church was where you have children's church. It was a canopy, canopy rented, not owned by the church. That was the church I met here 13 years ago. But God told me it was a good place to be. Even though in the physical I was not happy, 
in the spirit what I received. And I told my wife, <coughs> I said, God just told me that he will help us here. So we came here to work. And then a few weeks later, the MD of a guy mortgage bank called me for a meeting. I thought it was a meeting between me and him. He said we should meet at City of David. So I went there, unknown to me, I had called the elders. So the elders were there. They said that he has called for a meeting. I said, why? He said, you are owing 70 million. <laughs> That's the church. And he wanted them to be present so that I could give him a repayment plan. I said, I've had the receipt. You are asking for money. Anyway, uh, I told him I was not going to pay the money. I said, because if I am not the pastor in charge of TOD, and they bring me to TOD to worship, I will not worship here. At that time, even the, there was no paving stone under the canopy. If you came to church then, as a lady with a stiletto, your shoe will sink. <laughs> and when it rains, the ushers here will take wood and this thick thing to be pouring water away from the canopy. Said, if you want me to pay your money, the first thing you are going to do, you will give me more money. <laughs> so I can improve the church a little bit. So other people can come. So after we spoke back and forth, they said, okay, fine, let us approve 30 million for him. So I took more loan. And that was how we started. And God began to help us. Then a few weeks later, about maybe a few months, two pastors wanted to see me. The pastor that was here then had transferred some people from here, one to Ghana, to go and do mission work, one to Burundi. So the two of them, they asked for a meeting to see me. I said, what is the meeting about? They said, we wanted to know whether our support will continue. I said, we support. <laughs> said, monthly allowances. I said, don't worry. Me, I have my own problems here. But we will support you. Even though when people are sent overseas uh, on mission, maximum number of years we should support them was two years. We supported them for seven years. Not only that, the pastor of Burundi came and told me that uh, they have made a new law in Burundi. Any church, foreign church that does not have a church building, they were going to close them down. So he wanted money to buy land, to build. I said, you want us to give you money? I said, we don't have money. So one Sunday he came to TOD. They were all in church. So I called him up, come and greet TOD members and let us know how things are going in Burundi. And the pastor came. He began to roll on the altar. <laughs> thanking God. Father, I thank you. I did this work. I was sitting there. And God said to me, help him. <laughs> so I asked him to go back and sit down. And we took an unplanned offering that day just to see how we could help the pastor. And about uh, $15,000 was pledged. He needed about 20 something thousand to buy the land. So I told him the church will help him. To cut a long story short, we had helped them in Burundi with about close to $140,000. The church had been built and dedicated. Then the pastor in Ghana came, said they want to build also. Ah. I said, you want to build? <laughs> Which money? So after I thought about it, I said, I go and look for a small land somewhere. Then we'll see how we can help you. The man didn't listen to me. He went and bought four plots. So he came back and said, Pastor, we have gotten land. Even though we've not paid fully, now we need help. I said, did you buy a small plot of land to build? <coughs> he said, no. We bought four plots. We want to have children's church. We want to do this. We want to be like TOD in Lagos. 
I was very upset. To cut a long story short, we helped them. Church has been built. And then, enemy rose up in the neighborhood. Said our land here is their land. They took us to court to recover all the land. So we should come and pay again for all this land. Many of you didn't know. We were in court. God helped us and took care of it. So we didn't have to pay again for the land. There are many stories I can tell you. People will say a lot of water has gone under the bridge. But through it all, God has been faithful. Very faithful. I was telling them in the workers' meeting, I said, look, most of my blessings, a lot of blessings came while I was here, working under obedience. Even though it was tough, many of you didn't know what we went through. How the bills we had paid, and how out of what we didn't have, we were helping others. In those 13 years, we had built a school and donated it to the community. Before, community, they used to fight us. That parking space that you have there, if you know how we built it, the day we were going to build it, it was war. The church came with two lorry loads of policemen, armed, because we were expecting them to come and trouble us. And we were right. As soon as the work started, they came with one lorry load of policemen, armed too. When they came and saw our work, they left. <laughs> so sometimes I asked myself, I said, am I doing pastor's work? Or is there other work that I'm doing? <laughs> and church began to grow. And God began to bless us. I know how many buildings I have dedicated in TOD. Even today, I'm going for dedication. People say, ah, the man came from Ekoi. Let us see how they are going to build in Naja. There is no money in Naja. Really, they have not come to TOD. Because in TOD, we have money. Because when you have God, it doesn't matter where they put you. Even deserts will blossom. I won't want to take too much time because it's uh, Thanksgiving. But just to thank all of you. Because we, have not, we will not have gotten here without the support of the members. The early days were tough. Were tough. I remember one December, we ran out of money completely. I was trusting God for money. The money didn't come. So, I nearly gave up. I said, let, let me go to camp and go and join them for Holy Ghost Congress. As I was starting, the car about to leave, the accountant ran to me. You hear me? He said, Pastor, what about uh, the bonus for the staff? I laughed. Bonus for the, I have not paid salary. <laughs> You're asking for bonus. And I said, well, if only this lady knew how things were. I said, don't worry. Uh, calculate salaries and all of those things. I'm going to camp. And when I come back, we will take care of this one. You know, uh, fathers must know how to take care of children. You know? And I went to camp. Slightly discouraged. As I entered the camp like this, my phone rang. Pastor Kudon, where are you? They have just entered camp. We have been trying to get you. Uh, somebody wanted your account details. So really, I called the church. Yemi, can you please send me account details? So she sent to me. I forwarded to the person. And uh, later on, she told me we got an alert. I said, for how much? She said, 70 million naira. <laughs> 70 million naira. We didn't have money. I was looking for money for salaries. I was discouraged. I told her I was coming back to pay salaries. And God paid 70 million for one person. Is there someone I'm talking to this morning? You don't know how God will help you. 
But there is a God that rules in the affairs of men. And when there is no way, he makes a way. He makes a way. In those 13 years, we have done a lot of things that God has helped us. They called us that in Bulgaria, they wanted a parish. The pastor told me, we are having problems renting. I said, why? Say these are communists. You know, they don't really like church. I said, so what's the solution? I said, pastor, maybe we should just buy a place. I said, how much are they selling properties there? He said, it's not much. You know, these people are communists. Maybe 30,000 pounds can do it. I said, go and look for one. So we bought one for them. So now we have Tabernacle of David in Bulgaria. They own their property. And then they came and said, well, can you put something in, uh, in Kenya? I said, yes, we can do something in Kenya. So we have one in Kenya also. So I don't know where you are starting from. It doesn't matter. But you have to see with the eyes of faith that your beginning might be small and humble, but your end shall be great in the mighty name of Jesus. This church, I've been blessed in this church. Thoroughly blessed. I told them I was uh, praying in church one day in the afternoon. You know, I was doing my business then. I, and then I had a call, you know, my phone rang. So I picked it. Somebody called me from Canada. An old member of my former church. She was somewhere they were discussing. Looking for somebody to join them in a business that was risky but can be very profitable. And Say, look, we're just looking for a man that has integrity and things like that. And God just placed me in her heart. So she called me and said, Pastor, this was, I was here and they were saying this. And the only person I could think of was you. Say, will you be interested? I said, well, let me pray about it. So I prayed about it. And I went for the business. In my life, it was the most successful business. Yeah. Most successful business. It came while I was here in TOD. While I was here in TOD, I went for a wedding reception. I was even the chairman of the wedding reception. We were enjoying uh, for fourth and all of these things. <coughs> when my phone rang also, it was a pastor of Redeem. Say, Pastor, congratulations. I said, For what? He dropped his phone. Later on, he told me why he dropped the phone. I said, Maybe he made a mistake. Maybe the quiton that he had was not my own quiton. So that was why I dropped the phone. So it would not cause trouble. So I kept on enjoying the party. Then my phone rang again. Another person called me. Say, congrats, Coyote. I said, for what? I said, they have just announced you as the MD of Bank of Industry. I said, me. <laughs> Quickly, we left the party to go and look for where I went on the internet to go and check. I found out it was my own Quito. <laughs> it was here in this church while I was working that God was working on my behalf. You know, when you do things in obedience and trust in God, then let God take care of your own issues. I know I'm talking to a lot of people this morning. You know, TOD was not like this when I came. But we trusted. And God did what only he can do. So the promotion of TOD, when I was here, it was when it became a province. It became a, a region. That was a church that was set up with some seven people in a house fellowship. Seven or ten or whatever, I can't remember now. So I'm praying for all of you. In this month of September, God will surprise you pleasantly in the mighty name of Jesus. God will exceed your expectations in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Wherever life has thrown you, either in your office or in your family, you will excel in the mighty name of Jesus. When others are saying there's a casting down, your own song will be there's a lifting up in the mighty name of Jesus. What might be stumbling blocks for others will be stepping stones for you into destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. So, if you like this money, don't dance. For me and for my house. We shall do what? We shall, we shall praise the Lord. So, it's time for thanksgiving. Let us thank God and rejoice because God has been good to us. So, you will find the account details on the screen. So you can send your Thanksgiving offering to the account details that we have on the screen. Hallelujah. Are you ready to dance?
Amen. For those coming to TOD for the very first time, we apologize. Because in TOD, praise is our weapon. God has been so good to us. And there are many things we can thank God for. I remember a few months after I resumed here, a member lost a wife. A member was a member of the legal status of assembly. So we had a lot of people that came for the service from legal state and uh, people who were in government. We didn't have enough people in the choir. So I had to go to my former church to hire the choir to come and put on. We even borrowed the choir room so they could come and sing at the service of songs. Seated next to me was Pastor Ben Akabweze. So during the service, he felt pressed to go to the bathroom. So he looked at me, said, Pastor K. He said, that's the toilet. He was confirming before we would stand up. I said, no, that's not the toilet. That's my office. <laughs> and till the end of the service, he refused to go. <laughs> that was what we were 13 years ago. <laughs> and by the way, since Pastor Steve might be watching service from Canada, I'm sorry, Pastor Steve, I forgot to mention our parish in Canada. Our parish in Canada, Eagles Ark, is doing very well. That also will help them substantially. We help them substantially because, you know, everything they had to do was in foreign exchange. You know, but that notwithstanding, every assistance rendered to them had been fully repaid. We can go on and on and on and on about what God has done for us. But this morning we have done just a little bit of thanksgiving because that will be coming up very shortly. So let's just thank God again. Thank God for TOD. Thank God for his faithfulness to this parish, to this province, to this region. Father, we want to thank you for another opportunity, a special one to thank you. On behalf <coughs> of the church and all your children here, Father, we say thank you. Today, Father, accept our praise and thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for all your children who have danced this morning, who have thanked you this morning. I pray, Lord, that whatever they are trusting you for to make their joy to be full. Father, please answer by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. I pray for your children that they will always prosper yeah. and move forward yeah. in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. No matter what is happening in Nigeria or the world economy, I pray for your children, Father, they will be in Goshen in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Whatever they are trusting for themselves, for their families, for their businesses, Father, please answer by fire in the mighty name of Jesus. When others are saying there's a casting down, let their song be there's a lifting up in the mighty name of Jesus. Let kings and princes come to the brightness of your light in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And we commit the new region 51 into your hands, O Lord. Father, we are starting this month. Father, please go ahead of us. Please be with us. Cause us to excel in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your hand of favor never depart from us. We thank you and we bless you, Lord. For we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Let us join the headquarters now. Glory.
Thank you, Father. Ancient of days, we worship you. Alpha and Omega, we bow before you. The unchangeable changer, we worship you. Father, may you forever be glorified. Thank you for the past. Thank you for the present. Thank you for the future. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your defense. Thank you for security. Thank you for life. Father, accept our worship in Jesus' name. Today, my Father and my God, even as we begin our own new year, please glorify your name again. Heal the sick again. Set the captives free again. Save souls again. For every member of our families, my Father and my God, do something wonderful. Do something miraculous. Do something glorious. And for all your children who are ordained during the last convention from all over the world, Father, pour fresh oil on them. Let it be well with them. And for our students who are graduating from the Redeemers University, my Father and my God, let it be well with them. Let them be outstanding. Let them serve you to the end. And for all of us, my Father and my God, I pray that this month will be very special. 
As for your children who have been faithful in the payment of their tithes and the giving of their offerings this month, Father, embarrass them with your blessings. A kind of blessing that they will say, God, this is becoming too much. Father, pour it upon them. And I pray that all of us will serve you to the end. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Uh, shake out with one or two people and tell him or her, this new year will be glorious for you. And then you may please be seated. This morning we've been asked to discuss uncommon miracles. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, from verse 11 to 12. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, from verse 11 to 12. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. My prayer for you this morning is that God will give you uncommon miracles. They said we are to discuss uncommon miracles. We, we see here two words uncommon and miracles. Miracles being the noun, uncommon the adjective. So the principal word here is miracle. And the word uncommon there is very, very significant. Miracles, I'm sure we know. Miracles is um, divine intervention in the affairs of men. Simply means God controls the universe by certain laws, like the law of gravity that says whatever goes up must come down. And it's by that law that uh, rivers flow downhill. It is by that law <laughs> as, a, as a miracle, they are clapping for the engineers. <laughs> they are clapping for the miraculous engineers. <laughs> All right. They will help you, don't worry. I'm just introducing, before I get to the real thing, they, they would have sorted you out. The law of gravity makes sure that rivers will always flow downhill. The law of gravity is what ensures that if you ordinarily try to walk on water, you will sink. These are what happened when the law of gravity is in effect. But when God wants to perform a miracle, he suspends the law, comes in, does what he wants to do, and then he restores the law. For example, when Jesus was walking on water, 
he suspended the law of gravity. And when Peter jumped out of the boat, as long as he focused on Jesus, as long as he was connected to Jesus, the law of gravity was also suspended for him. But when he took his eyes off, you know the story, the law of gravity <laughs> shows that he can still be very active. So the poor fellow began to sink. But then as soon as he got connected to Jesus Christ again, when he cried for help, and Jesus held him by the hand, the law became applicable to Peter also. If you read the story very well, the, both of them walked back to the boat. Jesus didn't carry him. He just connected to him so that he can enjoy the same suspension of law of nature. So as many of you as are connected to Jesus Christ, you will enjoy miracles today. Yeah. But then the adjective on common suggests that miracles are in categories. Uh, there, there are miracles that whoever gave me this topic regards as common. Common miracles. Miracles that are so plentiful that uh, you don't pay too much attention to them. For example, many of us don't know that it is by a miracle of God that we breathe in and breathe out. You do it without thinking. So what's miraculous in breathing in and breathing out? Until coronavirus came, when the enemy began to attack the ability to breathe. If you ask anybody who suffered from Koro, they will tell you it is a miracle to be able to breathe in and breathe out. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 150 verse 6, Psalm 150 verse 6, let all things that have breath do what? Praise. Uh, thank you, you've gone ahead of me. I was going to say, breathe in and then breathe out. Try that. Let me see. Breathe in, breathe out. Again. Breathe in, breathe out. If you can do that without stress, then go ahead and praise the Lord. Another thing that many of us don't consider to be a miracle at all, or if we would call it common miracle, would be ability to sleep. Many of us don't know that it is a miracle that you can just jump on your bed and fall asleep. But there are millions of people all over the world who can sleep. Those who manufacture sleeping tablets, it's a billion dollar business. There are some people, they have to swallow all manners of sleeping pills, and yet they can sleep for three hours. The Bible said clearly in Psalm 127 verse 2, Psalm 127 verse 2, he said it is only the beloved of the Lord that God gives sleep. Thank God there are some of us. We can sleep, we can sleep almost standing up. People like me, many people don't know that when, when, when I want to do a long prayer, I go for a walk. They don't know the reason. Huh. I go on my knees 
and say, I want to do all night prayer on my knees. And I'll just wake up in the morning and discover. <laughs> Those of you who can sleep any time you want to, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> and then, then there is uh, something called waking up. Many of us don't consider it as a miracle. Many of you don't know that when you fall asleep, the enemies don't want you to wake up. Oh, no, sir, I have no enemies. If you are a nobody, then you might not have too many of them. And let me assure you, even Bartimaeus, who was a beggar, had enemies. He discovered the day he was crying to Jesus Christ for help. And all of a sudden, everybody ganged up against him. There are people who hate you even for being poor. Not to talk of those who hate you for being rich. There are some people who hate you for being a beggar. Because they consider you a nuisance. So when you sleep, they wish this fellow would just go. I remember years ago when area boys were really terrorizing people in Lagos. Somebody suggested, throw them into the ocean. And I thank God that we said, no, we won't do that. Rather, we'll take them, put them in a camp, and see what the Almighty God can do. And today, they have a big camp in Ekwe. We have more than 4,000 of them there. And among them, there are people who have been transformed through that uh, they are now missionaries abroad. But the Bible says in Lamentation chapter 3 from verse 22 to 23, Lamentation chapter 3 from verse 22 to 23, it says, it's of the mercies of the Lord that we are not consumed. His compassion fails not. Because the, the compassion is renewed every morning. When you wake up in the morning, it is the mercy of God that woke you up. It's not everybody who slept yesterday who is awake today. So if you slept yesterday and you are awake today, that's a miracle. May I hear you shout hallelujah. And there's another common miracle. That's the ability to eat. Mm, some of you said, no, that's not a miracle. Oh, <laughs> all you need to do is see some people who are extremely wealthy and they can eat. Oh, Solomon told us, and Solomon should know. You know, Solomon was <laughs> extremely rich. He said in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 19, Ecclesiastes 5, verse 19, he said, uh, when God gives riches and you have everything that you want and he gives you power to eat part of it he said it's the gift of God and then he went on to say in Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 2 Ecclesiastes 6 verse 2 he said when you are wealthy when you have everything but God does not give you the power to eat thereof. But strangers eat. You, the owner, you can't eat. He says it's an evil disease. You may not believe me, maybe because you don't have much money. But there are worthy people. Oh, Lord God Almighty. They can't eat salt. Some of them can't eat, they can't eat cow, cow, beef or rather. They can buy a hundred cows, but they dare not eat beef. There are worthy people who cannot eat uh, goat pepper soup. Then there are some of us, we don't have the money, but we can eat. People like me, I can eat anything. From Bali to Pandedia, any moment, any time, 
anybody like that here too? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. They call these miracles ordinary. Come on. Uh, who wants to praise God because he can breathe? Who wants to praise God before because he can sleep? Uh, <laughs> I met a man I told you before. He had 14 houses in Ibadan. 14. They couldn't sleep. He came to me and said, I heard that if you pray for me, I'll be able to sleep. Pray so that I can begin to sleep like normal people, and I will give you the 14 houses. I said, don't worry yourself. Give your life to Jesus. I will pray for you. You will be sleeping, and you keep your houses. I don't want 14 houses if I can't sleep. I prefer the ability to... <laughs> One more time, those of you who can sleep, shout hallelujah. But then we begin to consider miracles as, ah, this is miracle now, it's above ordinary. And that's when we see people who are considered incurable be cured. Ah, uh -huh. we say, ah, now that is a miracle. That is true. In Mark chapter 1, from verse 40 to 45, Mark 1, 40 to 45, when a leper came to Jesus Christ and said, please, I know you have the ability to heal me. If you will do so, and Jesus did so, Jesus told him, keep your mouth shut. Or don't tell anybody that, <laughs> he said, how can I keep quiet? Because that fellow who had an incurable disease and got cured, definitely will tell you, I received a miracle. And I'm decreeing today, every one of you that the doctors have said, we can't handle your case, receive your healing. Yeah. When somebody who had been under the control of demons, and when we're talking of demons, real ones, <laughs> And then all of a sudden you come across the Lord Jesus Christ and he took away the demons. You will know how to say thank you because you will know you had a miracle. In Mark chapter 1 from verse 23 to 27, Mark 1, 23 to 27, the Bible tells us about uh, a man who had an unclean spirit and he was in church. They have been coming to church all along and the demons have been there and then one day deliverance came. And any one of you who have been coming, because you see under beautiful dresses, there are a lot of things that are hidden. And any one of you who have been coming under the bondage of Satan, you will be free today. And then we have, we move from there, and they, they, they call that one, well, those are miracles now. But then there are some miracles that we could call extraordinary. And that is so represented particularly when help comes in the nick of time. When you are desperately in need of help, and the help comes just in time, so that you are not disgraced, so that you are not embarrassed. Psalm 46, verse 1. Psalm 46, verse 1 talks about our God, the ever present help in time of trouble. I mean, if you consider the story of a First Kings chapter 17, from verse 8 to 16, First Kings 17 from verse 8 to 16, it talks about a woman who had a son, and they had only one meal left, and the woman was ready for what she would do next: would prepare this last meal, 
My servant, my son, will eat it, and she had made arrangements. After the food, we will kill ourselves, commit suicide. And then the man of God arrived, and the last became the first. Some of you here may not understand that at all. <laughs> you don't know what to be in a very tight corner. In a situation that unless God shows up, or unless he shows up immediately, it will be too late. If God does show up, then you will know you have had a miracle. And I'm praying for everyone listening to me today, every one of you in need of urgent help. Before I finish preaching, the help will come. Occasionally, I tell you some stories, and some people wonder, why do you keep repeating this story? If you receive a miracle, in the nick of time, you can't forget. You can't forget. How many, how many of them are, can, can I talk about? We gathered, <laughs> and we had trusted God and told everybody, come, God will feed you. And then uh, all of a sudden, all money dried up. And nobody knew that there was no money left in my pocket. And then my wife came in the morning and said, uh, Darling, we will need the 5,000 Naira today. 5,000 5, Naira of those days, so when the Naira was stronger than the dollar. Don't worry, those days will return. Oh, I know you don't believe me. Uh, if the Lord I serve is still on his throne, <laughs> those glorious days will return. Maybe when that happens, you will know that there is a God of miracles. So my wife came and said, darling, we need the 5,000 Naira today. I, I asked her, when do you need it? Is it today or now? <laughs> you know the meaning of that kind of question. And nothing in the pocket. And she said, what's the difference between the two? <laughs> A lot of difference. And she said, today, ah, OK, go. What am I going to do? The crowd were gathered at the redemption camp there, and I had no money. Almighty God, you have to do something. And it wasn't long after that that woman came, you know the story, was just driving past and saw all that was going on at the camp and branched. I said, what's going on here? I said, oh, we are having a convention. Oh, this is beautiful. He said, uh, next year I will be part of it. I said, ah, hey, we are talking of today. <laughs> you are talking of next year. If God does not come through today, who knows whether there will be next year. And then he said, uh, they put his hand in his pocket, brought out an envelope. I said, uh, in the meantime, hey, now you are talking. <laughs> <laughs> and he gave me an envelope. I prayed for him. He left. I opened the envelope. One thousand naira. I said, oh, God, one down, four to go. It wasn't long after that that the representatives of the youth came. Uh, Pastor Kuo was the leader. I saw an envelope in his hand. And then he began to preach. Uh, Daddy, we see all the good works we are doing. You, you, you are feeding us with the word of God. It shouldn't be your body feeding us with the uh, material. Give me the envelope. <laughs> and then you can preach later. 
And finally, he gave me the envelope. I opened it, 2,000 Naira. <laughs> Thank you. I blessed them. They left. I said, Father, three down, two to go. And it wasn't long after that that I sent for my wife because other sources came. I could swagger and say, by the way, how much do you say you need? In the name of the one who called me, every one of you in need of help. You get that help today. And then we now come to the topic of today. Uncommon miracles. And it's miracles that are totally unusual. The Bible refers to it as special. God performs special miracles by the hand of Paul. When you read Joshua chapter 10, from verse 12 to 14, Joshua 10, 12 to 14, the Bible tells us Joshua was fighting the battle of the Lord, and then the sun was about to set. And if the sun should set, the enemies will escape. Thank you, Lord. I decree to somebody here today, your enemies will not escape. So Joshua, so Joshua raised his hand to God. Ah, we don't want these enemies to escape. So sun, don't set. Moon, stay where you are. I still have work to do. And the Bible says the sun stood still for almost a day. And in case you think that that's just a, a myth, that it didn't happen. Oh. When science was got to a stage, when men wanted to send man to the moon, and they had to do some calculations, they discovered that a day is missing. From the day the sun and the moon began to move. You know, I, I did a little bit of mathematics, so... We knew a little about some of the things. They found a day missing in all calculations. And then they had to do some research, and somebody who was a, not a Christian, but at least had read the Bible, said, oh, there's a place where they said the sun stood still for almost a day. And so they went back to the time of Joshua, discovered that, oh yes, there was a day. It's just that uh, it was not exactly 24 hours, 23 hours and 45 minutes. So there is still 15 minutes missing. And the same fellow said, there seems to be the story of a king who was sick and uh, God decided to heal him. And he asked for a sign. And God said, oh, that's all right. I will let the sun go back 15 degrees. And they put the time then to the time of Joshua and got 24 hours, and calculation became easy. <laughs> I am a scientist, but I'm also <laughs> a child of God. So I know the truth. Joshua said to the son, don't set until I finish my assignment. In the name that's above every other name. The son won't set today until you get your breakthrough. Now the Bible wrote it there. He said there had never been a day like that before. Or after. And I decree for someone today, what God will do for you today, it will be something that had never happened before. But let me let me begin to round up by 
moving even a step further. You know, there are miracles and there are miracles. But there are testimonies that are difficult to share. God can give you a miracle that you yourself will know. <laughs> if I tell people that God did this for me, they won't believe me. Miracles difficult to share. I can go through the scriptures and give you examples upon examples. You, you can read Genesis chapter 21 from verse 5 to 7. Genesis 21, 5 to 7. Sarah said, Who will ever believe that Sarah will give a child to Abraham? You know what she was saying? I was 90 years old. My husband, 100. Who will believe that God can perform a miracle and give a child to a couple like that? And I'm bringing this one forward because this particular month is, for, is a month for those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. It doesn't matter what science may say. A testimony that will be difficult to believe, God is going to give it to you. I have many of them. I gave a testimony when I was a lecturer at the University of Illinois of something that happened to me. When I saw the way the people began to react, I decided that there are some testimony I would just keep to myself. Mm. You want me to share one or two with you? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I was, I parked my car somewhere in Suru Lake. Came to Lagos, parked my car somewhere in Suru Lake. And then I finished what I wanted to do, and I went to my car, about to open the door. I've already put in the key, the door was open. I just now want to move back so that the door can open. And I felt a very big hand slammed me against my car, and in the hand flattened me against the car. I was about to say, who did that? When all of a sudden, one car came round the corner, flashed past me, so close to me that I could feel the wind on my dress. If I had moved just one centimeter back, I won't be here today. But when you tell people that kind of story, eh, you know what they will say? A hand slammed you against your car. Eh, eh, eh. I, in Suru Lele, yes. Is it during the day <laughs> or during the night? Are, are you saying God came down from heaven and with his mighty hand protected you from instant death? Or are, are you saying uh, maybe some angels are walking about this? They are telling you, sir, we don't believe you. One young man shared a testimony some time ago. Poor boy. And you didn't believe him. When he said this, that he, he got a phone call that he said. And uh, so he, and he told the brother, hey, please, 
you can embalm her, but don't bury. I will be with you as soon as I can. I have the handkerchief that Daddy Gio anointed. And then, before you could get permission from the place of work, etc., at the time he got home, I think in Port Harcourt or so, the, the sister had been dead for 11 days. And then we got there, carried the baby of the woman, went in and laid the handkerchief on the woman and said, hey, Mama, come back to life. Who's going to take care of your child? And of course, nothing happened. So we said, well, at least I've exercised my faith. Uh, so he turned and the baby was crying. Don't cry, don't cry, Joe. Uh, and turned towards the door. Suddenly he had a sound behind him. And by the time he turned, sister was sitting up in bed. They didn't believe him. Will you believe that kind of story? You think he said, but there are testimonies that are difficult to share. In the name that's above every other name, name that's above every other name, that kind of miracles that you have to think twice before you share will begin to happen to you from today. We're serving a God who can do wonders. We're serving a God who can perform miracles upon miracles that miracles that you wouldn't even believe. With all humility, I know him. It's my daddy. I know him. I know what he can do. He can perform uncommon miracles. Be honest, I'm living that he could do that. That a mathematician, an applied mathematician for that matter. Because a mathematics we you prove it, we will believe it. And Christianity says, you believe it, we'll prove it. But the matches and Christianity parallel lines. And they are not supposed to meet. But that God will go and grab a mathematician and apply it, mathematician, and bring him to a level where he could wave his hands and handkerchiefs will become anointed and the handkerchiefs will go and be performing miracles. I know him. And I'm telling you, he's here today. About to perform on common. But he can only perform these miracles for those who are his own. That's why those of you who are not a child of God, you don't know what you are missing. I'm telling you, when a mathematician says this thing is true, you better believe it. <laughs> because we live by proofs. I know him. He's here today. He's ready to cure the incurable. He's ready to make the one without wombs to have children. He's here to do what nobody will believe. But you must surrender your life to him if you want that kind of uncommon miracles in your life. So I'm going to give you an opportunity I will count from one to five. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you come and stand before the altar, wherever you are listening, and uh, I will pray with you. He will save your soul. That's one of the miracles he does. You just come, you say, Lord, save my soul. He will save your soul, and he will change you completely. So if you want to come, come now as I come to one. Come quickly, very quickly. Two. You can begin There's to nothing he cannot do. Nothing, nothing. 
as nobody cannot save, as nobody cannot heal, there's no captive that he cannot set free. But you must come to him first. Three. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Today is your day of salvation. And if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Four. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Thank you, Lord. Yes, please let them come. Give them room, please. Hurry up. Those of you from the overflow, hurry up, hurry up. Hurry up. Don't delay, oh, don't come forward keep now. Keep coming, keep coming, but I have to pray now. Let God perform on common Thank miracles you, in your Father. life. Come very quickly. Thank you, Lord. Keep coming, keep coming. Now, those of you already in front, talk to the Lord Jesus Christ. Save my soul. I want to be one of your children. I want to experience. You are come to pray, not to talk to me. You want to talk to Jesus Christ. He's the one who will save your soul. Okay. Now come and talk to Jesus Christ and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Save my soul. Please forgive all my sins. Jesus you must talk to now. Jesus Christ. Ask him to save your soul. Take him to the vestry. Take that boy to the vestry. Now, the rest of you, talk to the Lord now. Ask him to have mercy on you. Ask him to save you. So if you are coming, keep coming. You are not late yet. Just keep coming. Ask him to have mercy on you and to wash you in his blood so that you can become part of his family. Go ahead, talk to him. And the rest of us, please stretch your hands towards the people here and ask the Almighty God to save their souls. The one who save their own, uh, our own souls, who save their own souls also, and that God will give them genuine salvation. Genuine salvation. Please pray for them. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Oh, Father, we thank you for your word. We give you all glory. We give you all honor for your word. And for these people who have decided to come forward for salvation, please, Lord, save their souls. Have mercy on them. Let your blood wash away their sins. Write their names in the book of life. Let them become your children and let them begin to enjoy uncommon miracles. From now on, anytime they call on you, please answer them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And now those of you who have come forward, I rejoice with you. And from now on, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. And I promise you, I'll be praying for you. But before the counselors begin to attend to you, I want you to be part of the prayer we are all about to pray now. How many of you believe that God is going to answer your prayers today? Ah, then if you are sitting, stand up and shout a big hallelujah. <laughs> Voice to him and say, Father... I thank you for the miracles of the past. Miracles of breathing, miracles of sleeping, miracles of waking up, 
miracles of eating. But I need uncommon miracles. Please perform them for me. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. I thank you for the miracles of the past. Please, Lord, I need uncommon miracles today. Perform them in my life. Let's begin to bring our prayer to a close. Father, I want to thank you for the miracles of the past. Those of going to bed and waking up in the land of the living. Thank you, Lord, that we're able to feed ourselves. Thank you, Lord, that we're able to breathe air in and out. Thank you, Lord, Father, for the other miracles that you have done in our lives. But today, Father, we require and we need special miracles from you. Father, I commit all your children into your hands who are here and all those who will be part of this service. Father, in your mercy, perform uncommon miracles in all of these lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The miracles that men will know that your children have met with the Lord, perform in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The things that men consider impossible. Father, Please make it possible in the life of your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I pray, Lord, that even before the end of today, we shall begin to share with each other uncommon miracles that you have wrought in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And Father, let the miracles be permanent. Amen. We thank you and we bless you, Lord, for we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Congratulations. Congratulations. Tell your neighbor, congratulations. Praise the Lord. Read John 51. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we please listen to the following announcements? The Heritage Hour, that's uh, the pregnant and the expectant mothers. All the members and new members are encouraged to wait behind after this service by the choir stand <laughs> after the service by the choir stand all house fellowship leaders should please collect their manuals from pastor shegri baleimi at the foyer after the service at the foyer after the the service the women of destiny Women of Destiny, their yearly fun day will be coming up on Saturday, the 14th of October, by the special grace of God. Details of this event will be communicated later. Kindly note the date on your calendar. It promises to be a great time. Praise the Lord. The couple's timeouts. The tickets are still on sale, and uh, today is the last day for the tickets to go for 20000 So please, if you have not bought your own, avail yourself of this discount of 20000 After today, the ticket will now be 25000 So please, you will see those at the ticket stand at the back of the auditorium, exit 4. 
to buy your own ticket. And those who have paid should please also see them to collect their own tickets. Praise the Lord. Have we enjoyed today's service? If you have, can I see your hand? Please just wave your hand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to welcome our very important personalities. Those of us who have attended our meeting for the very first time today, please, if you're here, you take a step of faith by putting up your hand. This is your first time in Region 51. Your first time. Please put up your hand. Praise the Lord. Please take another step of faith and rise where you are. Rise where you are. Please rise where you are. Let's put our hands together for them. You will see people who are waving placards to you. Please just follow them and they will take you to the reception to, for a short reception over there. Let's begin to uh, uh, clap for them as they walk away. This is Tabernacle of David, Region 51. You're welcome to our service today and uh, we pray that you will make this your church if you have no other church to attend. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we please rise to close the service? Let's begin to thank the Lord for a day like this. Let's thank God for all the blessings, all the miracles, the special miracles. Let's thank him for preserving us. Let, let's thank him for keeping us from evil. Let's thank him because we will not hear bad news. Let's thank him. Let's thank him. Let's praise his name for the divine healing he's given to us. Begin to round up your prayers now. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for this wonderful service. Thank you for the special miracles that we have appropriated already in our lives. Father, we look forward to their manifestation in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for answering our prayers, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom.